Welcome back, guys. Well, it's starting to feel a little more wintry outside. We have a storm on the way. And what a better time than now to actually start uh, thinking about things for the winter time, some projects, and something that you can do inside in preparation for when the cold hits. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your very own mukluks for snowshoes. Stay tuned. Well, as you know, um, last winter I made an anorak and I really enjoyed using it outside in the winter, this past winter, and I wanted to uh, work on another project. And as you know, I have this book here called The Snow Walker's Companion and I really enjoy the book and at the back of it there's lots of different uh, plans to make outdoor winter clothing. In the back of the book, there's actually a pattern for how to make mukluks. So I thought I'd, uh, I'd try it out. This is a new thing for me. I wanted to see how it worked. So earlier on in the spring, I started working on the project and I actually have one completed. So one of two. So you can certainly see how it's gonna look at the end of the day. Very, very nice. Today I thought I'd show you how to go about doing this and we'll actually have the other, the mate uh, to the shoe here to show you if there's any specific details I need to point out. Let's take a peek at some of the items that we'll need for this project. So I'm just going to show you the book close up and the part we're going to be looking at. So at the back of the book that's where I found my uh, patterns for making traditional clothing. Um, so this is the spot here that shows you how to do the moccasins and uh, the attached gaiters or the mukluks. So I'll just sort of go through all the instructions here. I did things a little bit differently and I'll show you where I made those changes as I go along. So as you can see, this book's very comprehensive. It certainly shows you uh, the patterns that you need to make and it shows you patterns for sort of smaller feet and larger feet. It tells you exactly how to enlarge the pattern um, on a photocopier or just manually, you know, by measuring. You just got to enlarge it by, you know, 290% to get the real life size. And there's, uh, you know, the larger size there as well. You can see I've already done some measurements. And it goes on to explain, you know, making the gaiters. Here's where it shows you how to do the special stitching. So we're going to learn how to do a pucker stitch as well as a whip stitch. This book also explains how to make duffel liners. I actually used, uh, you know, for these mukluks, I actually went and bought some Kamek, um, very thick, heavy uh, liners for use for rubber boots. I bought those and I'll show you those a little bit later. So as you can see, instead of making the uh, duffel liners in the book, I just bought these from Canadian Tire. They're a thick liner that one would use, you know, for rubber boots. So they're really thick felt liners. You can also use them as well for this project. So here are the two major materials that I'm using for this project. We have uh, for the gaiters a medium weight canvas, kind of in a, a buff color. And here's the hide that I'm using. This is alkyd, so it's fairly thick as you can see right there. Ideal would be to use a uh, smoked deer or smoked moose hide. Uh, this is all I could acquire, but uh, it's a fair size hide here. You can see I've been you know, using it for the project. So there's lots of room for uh, material here for several projects actually. So I've got some really nice thick hide here. Towards the, the edges of the hide, it gets really, really thin. And these areas I'm not using for this project. I'm gonna be using um, the thick part because I want to have this uh, this set of mukluks last for a long time. Here are some other things that we'll need for this project. Some scissors. You can use a needle driver to help you as you're trying to drive the needle through the leather because leather is pretty tough. Uh, this one I just got at a, a fishing store, an outfitter, where you would uh, get needle drivers for you know tying flies. So this one's really nice. It's actually got some scissors here as well. So um, you know this could be your kind of all-in-one for when you're doing your sewing. Really important there to make a little thimble for your finger um, so that when you're doing it by hand and you're pushing the needle through the heavy hide uh, that you don't injure yourself. Certainly over time you get calluses and you don't need that um, but it's always good when you're starting up to make a thimble. You want uh, some leather needles so these ones are uh, numbers three to seven so you can take your choice of which one you'd like. Basically they have uh, like a sort of a tip on them, a cutting needle tip so for example, you know, you can't see it here, but it's got sort of like a chiseled, you probably can't see that, basically has a little chiseled end. If you were to cut it off straight up and down there, you're going to end up with like a diamond shape. There's a several cutting edges there. 
at three cutting edges to be precise. So that will really help go through the leather, make sure it's sharp. You'll probably want a couple packages of these because if you're working with a really heavy hide over time, doing lots of projects, you'll run out of uh, sharp needles. I'm using artificial sinew for this project. Uh, you could use real sinew if you wished. Um, this one I just got from a leather worker's store. Another thing that's not necessary but I've used in this project as a little cheat is a leather punch. So uh, you'll see in one part of the muckluck where I'll uh, likely just sort of pre-punch some holes so that my sewing goes a lot faster and a lot more evenly. And a measuring tape as well because uh, you're going to be measuring out your pattern on your canvas as well as on the hide. So this is the first part that you're going to do is you're going to cut out the pattern for your shoe size and you can go back and sort of pause on the uh, the book images that I had there. So I enlarged the pattern by 290%. So this will actually fit my foot. And it's for like a small to medium sized foot. For the men's you'll probably want to go for the larger size. And you'll see later on that we kind of customize where our heel goes. So there's lots of room here um, for different size feet. So this the outer part here is actually the tracing pattern for the sole of the muckluck. The sole is actually this part here and the top part here I actually just cut out of the middle of this one to save uh, on paper. You don't have to do that but I did and this part right here is actually the pattern for the vamp and the vamp is actually the top of the shoe and through the magic of television it's all done. So here we are, here's the vamp and here's the sole. And what I'm going to do is, um, you know, I'm going to put it so that uh, the fuzzy side is up and the sort of smoother side is down. And this is the top of the vamp right here. So the inside that touches my foot at all times, I'm going to make sort of the fuzzy end of the hide. Another thing I've already cut out is the gaiters. Um, so basically you trace the pattern in the book, you enlarge it as per the instructions. And what I've done is uh, I've cut out the gaiter. So here it is kind of all folded up. I'm not doing a double thickness. This will be uh, what the gaiter is at the end of the day. And now that's all cut out, we'll put it aside. We'll be using that later. So we're going to get started and tack the vamp to the sole. And I'm going to take off a, a really good length of the artificial sinew here. I really don't want to run out. I'm going to do one side then the other when we're sewing. So I'm going to cut off a few feet here. And when you uh, work with sinew, you can actually tease it apart into, um, you know, a few threads actually. So you can see here, you can kind of tease it apart. You know, I can get a probably three sort of decent sized ones. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to um, use one that's sort of double double thickness versus the full thing. So I'm going to sort of split it in half so we can kind of see. I'll use one for each side. So it really peels apart quite nicely. It's uh, very waxy to the touch. We'll put one aside here. Just put that one aside. Now first off I'm just going to start off with a few tacking stitches just to kind of um, keep the vamp tacked to the sole so we can do our pucker stitch things don't kind of slide around on us. I'm going to tack down the tip of the toe here and let's get my thimble on here so I don't injure myself. So this one you don't have to leave in here so I'm just going to kind of push it through for now through the top and uh, I'm actually just going to tie a little knot that we can uh, use a stitch ripper to take out. So you're going to want to make sure it's sort of symmetrically placed here and centered. And then I'm going to do another sort of stitch right over here on this side. In the book it's referred to as C. And this one does not have to stay put. I'm just kind of putting it in there. All right, now we're going to work on the other side there. In the book, it's referenced as D. So you kind of want to make sure it's in a similar location on this side. And that's where your measuring tape comes in if you can't eyeball it 100%. And 
Be prepared to stab yourself many times during this project. And there you go. So now that we have our stitches in there to sort of tack it into place to get the general shape of the moccasin part of the muckluck, what we need to do is gather up some of this excess of fabric here and we're going to make it sort of the same size as the vamp on top. So how we're going to achieve that is by using something called a pucker stitch uh, at the level of the toe to grab all this extra fabric to bring it together to make the shoe. So we're going to make sure we have an ample amount of uh, sinew again and going to tie a little knot again in the end of it and we'll start by gathering the extra material at the toe there to make it a nice shape that we're used to. So the way the book has you do it is to you know put this together here for about an inch, do a whip stitch and then uh, make very small little puckers and then get to larger puckers as you get to the point of the toe and then repeat it on the other side. I found that that didn't really work for me and I ended up you know my first run of making the moccasin part ended up having an elf toe because I really had um, you know improper gathering of the puckers and I didn't really do my spacing properly so I basically want to do it a little bit differently I'm gonna do a bit backwards where I'm gonna actually start here at the top with my puckering and then as things straighten out then I'll go and do the whip stitch so that just worked for me a little bit better so I'm going to uh, do it this way but feel free to do it the way you feel most comfortable so basically what we're going to do is we're going to kind of start in this region again. I'm going to hide uh, the knot underneath on the inside of the muckluck. You kind of want to go in, um, you know, maybe about an eighth of an inch or so from the edge because you just don't want to get too close and have things pull through. Um, so I'm just going to go right about here. It's probably a little bit of, like a quarter of an inch, but um, you'll get the hang of it. So go right beside where I went in before. Excellent. And so you'll hide all the knots kind of on the inside. And as you recall, we're going to take this little tacking stitch out anyway. And you're going to go approximately the same depth in on this side. You can see there's a lot of force to push that through. If you didn't want to use your thumb, um, again, you could also, you know, use like a needle driver to kind of push it through and then kind of grab it on this side so you don't end up stabbing yourself. That is another option. So it's totally up to you. All right, so we go through and I'm going to go through one more time just to, just to bind it there. You kind of got to go through the same hole. So you want to kind of take it easy there. All right, so perfect. So it looks like I'm going to start on this side. So what you want to do is you want to make these little tiny puckers basically with the fabric from the sole and then the vamp kind of stays the same. You don't ever pucker the vamp. Uh, the vamp stays the same and you kind of move an equal distance uh, down the vamp as to the height of your puckers. So kind of a bit of a job to do this but you hold it with your index finger here and then we're going to kind of move down about the height of the pucker Try not to stab myself. It was inevitable. Move your finger out of the way. And there you go. So I've got that one through. Gotta make sure to grab onto that pucker. Oops. Sometimes your wires get a little cross there. And then you're gonna go through again because you wanna tack that pucker in place. There you go. So there is your first pucker. You want to make sure your tension is good. You want to make sure it's nice and tight. Perfect. So there's the first pucker. We'll make the next one rather similarly. Into the second one here. Sure you line it up. And then you go around again because you're going to want to anchor this little guy in place. Excellent. So pull it nice and tight. You want to keep good tension there. So 
yeah, you can see I'm kind of gathering up that fabric there on the toe. We're going to kind of keep going down around the toe to do that until it uh, starts to become even. And then I'll show you once uh, it becomes even, we'll do a straight whip stitch. So I think we're just about there. We've got the toe pretty much, yeah, we've got the toe pretty much puckered there on this side. And I'll show you too, for this uh, particular pattern, these uh, puckers are actually going to get pushed underneath to where our feet are underneath. Uh, some people actually will just leave it, the toe with those little uh, puckers visible on top, but with this pattern, uh, they want us to kind of tuck them in. So that'll be another step. Now I'm just going to do sort of a straight whip stitch here to the end. And I think what I'm going to do to make it look really nice and really even is actually just to use my cheat and use my little leather punch. So I have really equidistant um, punches there. It'll be really easy to put the needle through, but you don't have to. You can just kind of keep going around. But I just want to show you how um, my little leather punch works. This is my little leather punch here, and I'm actually going to put it through both layers there. So all you do basically, it's uh, kind of like that. So now we have a really easy guide for doing the whip stitch. So the whip stitch is quite easy. I'm just kind of going over the top two layers of the fabric here. I'm using my little hole punch here as a guide and there will be no puckering from this point on. You can kind of line up the stitches there. So basically you can see what I'm doing there. Here are all the pucker stitches and now I'm just kind of going in and around, in and around uh, to create this kind of stitching pattern along the side of your foot. Where the toe is really puckered, the side of the foot will actually be just a whip stitch. I'm basically also going to remove this tacking stitch here I'll use that as my last hole. And remember, we're going to leave this part here because this part has to be sewn to the gaiter. So don't worry about this little flappy bit here. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to go through back through here and then go backwards a little bit just to kind of reinforce everything. Some people go, you know, basically all the way back up and kind of make an interesting pattern. But I'm just going to, I don't know, go back about six or seven stitches or so just to kind of add a little extra strength to this part of the muckluck. Whoops, just lost my needle there. You'll also do that a few times or ten on this project. I'm almost uh, out of the sinew here. So I guess I picked the right amount. Alrighty, that's looking pretty darn nice there. So now I'm going to just hide the knot. I'm just going to kind of poke this underneath here. And I'm just going to grab one of the stitches from behind it. So now that I've come through the other side, I've you know grabbed a little bit of a stitch from behind there. There is a bit of a loop, and I'm just going to kind of wrap the loop a couple times around the needle and drag the free end along and tighten it up. It's going to go through one more time. Man, <laughs> really short on the sinew here. Then wrap it around again and pull the free end through the loop. And we've got a good knot now. There we go. Just gonna kind of push it down. And I'm just gonna trim. And I'm just gonna trim a little bit of a tag on there. Perfect, so as you can see, I've completed this side of the moccasin. Now we're going to do this part right here. It's gonna be a little bit more awkward because uh, you know one side's usually easier for some people than the other. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll give it a go and hopefully it ends up looking symmetrical. 
I'm actually going to take this tacking stitch out of the way that we made earlier because of course the other side is already holding it together. All right, so we've got that uh, other half of the sinew over here. So I'm going to get that ready. Now this is lots of fun, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's a great project. And if you get working on this now, you'll be all ready for snowshoeing season. Again, I'm just tying a little knot here at the end. And I'm going to start in the same spot like I did the last time and hopefully our puckering will end approximately uh, at the same location. So as you can see here, it was sort of straight from about here. So this is the part we have to kind of gather up in the puckers, just like the other side. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be a little bit different in terms of our muscle memory because I'm going to be... Um, you know, using my left index finger to kind of push things up here. I use it on this side too, but I kind of pull it to the left. Now I'm going to be pushing to the right to make the puckers. So we'll start again right here about an eighth of an inch in, and you're going to hide that knot again. Perfect. We're going to come in on this side. And this first one is just we're going to anchor everything in for this side. Excellent. And now instead of pulling the puckers with our uh, index finger, I'm right handed. So using my left hand to kind of pull the pucker to the left, I'm actually going to be pushing to the right to make the puckers. And you kind of want to make them similarly to the way you made them on the other side. So it's symmetrical. So there's a bit of an art to this to try to make it look like it was all one continuous stitch process. But you know what? These are handmade. They're going to be unique. So... It's all good. When you come through, you're going to go through again, just like on the other side, to hold the pucker in place. There you go. There's the first pucker on this side. Now we're going to make another one, approximately the same size. And remember to move down vamp approximately the same distance as the height of your pucker and about an eighth of an inch in. Again, trying to get this muscle memory again for this side is interesting. You're just not used to it. There we go. And then we're going to go through again. That's going to kind of come down and lock that pucker in place and pull it nice and tight. Nice and tight. Perfect. That's looking good. So again, you make your pucker. Try not to stab yourself and get yourself caught up in the sinew like I just did. <laughs> through the hole, through to the back again, try to come out the same hole and pull it through and lock it tight. Perfect. Excellent. All right, so I managed to do it. I've got uh, the toe puck ring all finished up here and now I'm just going to do the same as I did on the other side. I'm going to do the little hole punch here and do the whip stitch on this side. And then I'm going to show you how to uh, measure the heel so that we can um, get this moccasin finished with the sewing department. All right, so there we go. There is the moccasin part of the muckluck. Now let's, uh, let's measure out where our heel's going to be in uh, this pattern and we'll uh, get sewing that part.
So to do the fit for the heel, uh, what you need to do is put your duffel on, uh, the ones that you have that you're gonna line your muckluck with, and you're gonna make sure you've got this on here nice and snug, right where you would want your foot to rest. You'll make it nice and even here. And then with your pen, you're gonna kinda wanna mark, um, you know, sort of the crescent here of the heel. So you know where your your heel is and basically it looks like you know if I wrap this around it actually fits exactly so all I need to do really is stitch this together with a whip stitch and then I'm gonna make a little crescent here uh, for the heel like I have in the other boot so just make sure that you're you know marking off where your just trace where you know the end of your ankle is there and uh, this, uh, you know, if you have to, you can just sort of make some marks here on the leather. You know, if it's too long and you want to, you know, take in a little bit evenly on each side, you can do that. Um, but uh, this one actually is a perfect fit. Uh, again, I have the sort of the ladies size that I took from the book. So now you basically take off uh, the muckluck and we're going to, you know, we'll take out the liner here. And here you can see the mark I made from where my heel is. So now we'll go back to the drawing board here at the table and we'll uh, prepare the back of the moccasin for the muckluck. Just showing you where we are right now. So we're at this part of the diagram. So what we want to do, the length, I think is fine. You know, if I put the two ends together, it's going to fit my leg really well. So all we need to do now is sort of make this little crescent shape cut and I've marked off, you know, where my heel ends. We don't want to do it right at that mark, obviously. Uh, we just want to make a couple of notches here uh, at the end of the leather. And then you'll see how this will just be a little flap that'll fold up over the back seam. So as you can see, I've marked where my heel lands and uh, I'm going to want to make that notch fairly symmetrical. So it looks like maybe my heel starts at three and a quarter there. Make it on the same measurement on this side. All right. Yeah, that'll work. So I measured and I made sure it's equal on either side, it's about three and a quarter inches. And then I'm basically gonna just maybe draw a little line down here. So I have a general idea, the curve of my foot. All right, obviously my foot was a little bit off center here when I had it on. So I'm basically gonna go up about three quarters of an inch here. Make a mark on either side. And I'm also gonna just mark the middle of the moccasin here. All right, and then basically, you know, you're gonna transpose this curve kind of down here to that center point and then back up again. I'm trying to remember which one was my <laughs> three quarter inch mark. Yeah, it's that one. All right. So there you go. So it's just a crescent here. Again, you make a mark kind of in the center, go about three quarters of an inch up. And I'm just sort of following the natural pattern of my heel there. So now what we do is we're just gonna cut this little part out with scissors. Okay, so that's all done. So basically now we're gonna sew the two edges together with the whip stitch and then this little crescent is gonna uh, basically come up and cover up the end of our handiwork there at the back. Again, I'm going to use, uh, just so it looks really neat and tidy, I'm gonna use my little punch here. Just to keep a uniform stitch length. Again, we're going to want to start on the inside to be able to hide the knot.
So we're just doing the whip stitch all the way along here. And I've just made it easier for myself by tapping a few little holes, um, just so it looks symmetrical and nice. Again, you do not have to do that, um, but it does a nice added touch to it. I'll just keep going on just like this. So as you can see, that's uh, all done. Again, I'm gonna back tack a couple of stitches here, just for a little extra security. And then again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hide my knot on the underside of the moccasin. And again, I'm just gonna sort of stick it in the side this way. And I'll tie my knot like I showed you before. And there's the knot. Okay, so next step is we're gonna fold up our little crescent here and I'm just gonna sew it on like that. I'll, uh, again, I'll approach it from the inside of the heel and then I'll kind of go in and out all the way around uh, just to seal up that heel. Just gonna go from the inside here. This is a little bit on the tricky side of things, but kind of gotta go by feel here. Just, it's just starting it, which is really tricky. Once you see where you are, it's not gonna be so bad. And I'm just gonna kinda go right here. So one final step I want to do on uh, the moccasin I'm working on today is to put this little tiny leather um, loop in here at the back. So you can see we're going to be using some ribbon to help tie these on and uh, it needs something to kind of grab onto when you're tying it. So let's sew this on. That's the final step in uh, the leather work for now. So it's sort of the same idea, you know, as the same kind of stitching as you would do here for the heel. You're just going to kind of put that here. Give yourself a bit of room because you're going to be sewing on the gaiter. Um, but this is where the, the ribbon is going to go through. So you can just uh, make about a one inch square um, or even a little bit larger if you want. A little square here. And you're just going to sew uh, on this side and on this side, the top and the bottom, so that you can feed a ribbon through. Again, you're kind of just going by feel to figure out where you got to be. So don't stab yourself. All right, that's pretty good. Great, so I've got a nice little loop there. Now I'm just going to tie the knot and we'll be done. So as you can see there, that is the, the leather work there for the muckluck. I think it looks really darn good. And uh, I mean, I guess there's no reason why you couldn't sort of stop here and, uh, you know, trim this with fur. And if you're good at beading, you know, do some beading here. And obviously you'd have a liner for this, you know, not a big boot liner, but maybe another a wool liner. You know, when I make my boots here, I'm also going to line them with a, a wool um, insert there. So, I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't, you know, uh, you know, make these into moccasins sort of at this point, you know, and just have, you know, make yourself some really beautiful, um, you know, wool liners here uh, and then trim with fur or the like. So one final step, though, that I want to do is um, as for this pattern, um, you know, some people like the puckering at the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use a pencil or a pen or even just the tip of those little needle drivers and sort of push in these puckers underneath so that they'll be visible underneath and the surface will be a bit smoother. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this to kind of push the puckers uh, to the underside. Again, you don't have to do that. It's just something that I kind of want to do and what I did with the other one. So we'll make it symmetrical. It's a little bit of effort to kind of push these through the holes again. And if you don't like the look, you can always put them back. And that's what the look is like if you push the puckers to the inside of the moccasin. So you can choose however way you want to do it. Well, that was certainly a lot of work. However, it's going to be really worth it in the end. 
The next step we're going to do is to add on the gaiters and uh, for that one I'm going to break out the sewing machine for some parts of it. Again you don't have to use a sewing machine but it just makes some of the work go a lot faster. What I'm going to do in working with the gaiters is uh, put on this really decorative um, ribbon right here and this one's really easy because I can actually just iron it on. So I'm going to measure some out right now and then I'm going to iron it on and then we'll go from there. At this point uh, you can also put on some decorative uh, you know, ribbons elsewhere uh, on this project. Totally up to you. So let's stick on the ribbon. The ribbon of course is actually going on the outside of the fabric. what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn over about an inch and a quarter of the top seam of the gaiter and uh, I'm going to sew that down. This is a spot where we're going to be putting uh, in the leather lacing so it's going to kind of be hidden in just like that and we'll make a couple of buttonholes as well for the lace to exit. Let's get the sewing machine. Now I'm just going to sew the side seam here. So again I've got the uh, the wrong side of the fabric uh, facing to me and the inside of the fabric, the right side is actually inside here. Because of course we don't want to see the seam on the outside. sewing machine aside and uh, as you can see I'm going to just turn the fabric right side out and you can see what the gaiter is looking like. So there we go that's what the gaiter looks like this is where the moccasin will attach. This part here is normally the front of the gaiter and the seam is at the back. When I first made the project, I did it backwards. So at this point, you're going to kind of check to see that your gaiter matches up with your shoe because the opening should be kind of similar in size. So I'm just going to kind of go like that. This part here is the front. So you can see it matches up nicely there with the van. And as we go around to the back, It matches really nicely. You could always do a little bit of puckering, um, you know, if you had to kind of gather in some of the either fabric to get it to fit, but uh, follow the pattern, it should be an exact fit. I'm going to turn everything inside out again, both the moccasin and the gaiter. So now you kind of have to mentally visualize how this is going to work. The completed one for the other side, as you can see, um, what we have to do is we've got to eventually sew this, the tongue of the vamp on and how we're going to sew the gaiter to the moccasin is by doing a whip stitch. So we're going to create uh, a little bit of a fold here and do a whip stitch all the way around, all the way around the moccasin to this side right here and actually I'm going to go across the uh, little tongue of the vamp here as well. This will be loose and we'll sew that on after. The previously completed one, as you can see, um, with the pucker that we're making on the other side, it actually, we're going to make a flap here with the, the ribbon. So it's going to kind of cover up our ugly little seam there. Now I want to kind of line up, um, you know, this V-notch centrally with the tongue of the vamp. And how we're going to make that little pinch to do our sewing is, um, basically take a little tiny few millimeter pinch right here and that's what we're going to be doing our whip stitch with and then as you can see if you flip it over the uh, the ribbon there is going to lay nice and flat along the leather moccasin to have a clean finish. To make sure where the center of the tongue is I'm just going to make a quick little measurement. It's going to take a quick little measurement here so it's about four and a quarter. So we'll go in about two and an eighth. We'll just make a little mark there that's going to get covered anyway by the ribbon. And I've got my center, got my center mark here. Just going to kind of go in there. 
What I'm actually going to do in this location is just do a little tacking stitch just to kind of hold it there so I can just line everything up with the tongue and then that will come out and I'll start my actual sewing. Again, I'm just going to kind of pinch the fabric here and see kind of like that. Let's do it again for you. Just like that. So this part will lay nice and flat down on the moccasin and this part's actually going to be used to sew to the moccasin part of the muck look. So the notch right here is central so I'm just going uh, to grab a bite here and just go into the one of the holes there that's central. Just, just tack a little tiny. It's going to go back through on this side. And there, then I'll kind of grab it and I'll just tie these two little pieces together in a knot. Just attack this. And I'm going to do a couple more, you know, one in this corner and one in this corner here, because that's the trickiest part. And we'll begin sewing. All right, so I have those three tacking stitches at the front. And as you can see, when I go all the way around the boot here, everything's going to fit nicely. And uh, the two seams will be matching there at the back. I might actually do a tacking one here at the back, just so that I uh, keep things nice and symmetrical on both sides. That's a close up there of the kind of stitching that we're going to be doing. Uh, you can see where the binding tape is, the moccasin, the gaiter, and how we're going to be doing the whip stitch. So it's probably easiest to start here at the back of the heel, simply because at the front we're not going to, we can't whip stitch through the, the tongue of the vamp. So we'll start right here. And it's going to be exactly you know, how we did the whip stitching at, uh, you know, the side of the moccasin and at the back, except you're just making a little bit of a pucker here in the fabric so that your binding tape, um, shows nicely on the outside of the moccasin. So I've sewn all along this side all the way up to the tongue now. Just working away at this corner point right here and I'm going to have to go around here. First we're going to be doing a bit of a whip stitch but when we get to this spot we're actually going to be doing, um, we can't do a whip stitch around this large tongue. So it's basically going to be like when we sewed on the uh, little tab at the back. You're going to have to go in and out the other side and kind of back and forth like that um, all along the tongue. So this part's a little bit tricky and it might not look as even as it did uh, before, but uh, we'll give it a go. This one's a little bit more painstaking to do. But thankfully it's uh, only a very short section of the shoe. So I've made it all the way across the tongue of the vamp. Now I'm back on the other side. So when we're on this side, all there is left to do now is whip stitch all the way to the heel. Excellent. So the next step is to sew the tongue of the vamp to the gaiter. So you can do this by hand. I may actually do it by the sewing machine. All right, so the tongue is now sewn on. Thankfully the sewing machine uh, was able to get through the leather, no problem. So I flipped it over right side out and you can see the results of uh, the sewing. So as you can see the ribbon here is actually creating a flap over the seam so it has a nice clean finish and it kind of goes all along the back like that and uh, along the side and across the top of the shoe. Next step is to make two buttonholes here uh, with my sewing machine so that I can feed the leather cord through the top. On the last pair I made them about uh, in the middle between uh, you know the seam here and the edge of the gaiter and about two centimeters in on either side. So I'm just going to make a little mark there. You can make them in as or far apart as you want. It's going to keep these boots kind of symmetrical. Just going to mark that off and uh, the sewing machine will get out now and we'll make those buttonholes. Both are made, so now I'm going to use a stitch ripper to cut an opening only in one side of this fabric, not the back side. 
and uh, we'll feed the leather cordage through. And I'm through on this side. Now here's the tricky part, sort of feeding uh, the leather cord all the way through, all the way around, and then you can kind of cut it off where you want it. Some people you can kind of attach a safety pin and push it around. I'm just going to kind of snake it through the top of the gator. Now I've realized that I've come to the back seam here. There's no way you're going to be able to feed the cord through. So what I'm going to do is make a couple little uh, holes on the inside here um, so that you won't be able to see it on the on the outside and make a couple little buttonholes here and pass through the cord on the inside before it dives back into the other part of the gator. Okay, I've got the leather cord through the top of the gator and you can see I just did a couple more buttonholes here at the back. It's hidden um, from the outside view just to kind of go into the other chamber here of the gator. So now you want to trim off uh, your leather cord just to the length that you'd like to be able to sort of tie it off at the top. This is going to help uh, keep the snow from uh, going in and under the gator. So I think I'll just keep it to about that long. What you can do is just sort of tie a little knot here just to prevent you from losing um, you know, the cord down the hole there. To tighten the mucklucks on your heel, um, you're going to want to use some, uh, I've got this sort of uh, cotton twill tape here, I believe it's called. And basically you're going to stick it through the back of this little loop here. I've got the needle driver here, actually, I think that's what's going to work for me. Just kind of stick it through, grab the end or pliers or something and there you go, it's right through the other side. So just thread it through there and it's going to need to be long enough to kind of tie up your legs. So first off with the mucklucks, we've got to get our uh, liners ready, the duffel liners. And what I'm going to do is put in one of these uh, nice uh, warm wool shoe soles to, uh, to line them. So I'm going to do that on each side. So the mucklucks are only as warm as uh, the insulating layers that it has. So we're going to want to make sure we've got lots of insulating layers if we're going to be out for hours of snowshoeing. I'm going to put these on now just to sort of test fit the mucklucks and then I'll uh, gear up properly just to show you how it works. It takes a little bit of wiggling to get these on. All right, let's get the second one on. There we go, they're both on. So we're going to tie the top, this is going to help prevent snow from getting in there. And this is going to just provide a little bit of extra squish to your thighs, so you're going to just sort of tie them up here. I'm just going to tie them at the back, I'm going to tie this one now. Super, there they are. There are the mucklucks, they are done. So what I'm wearing now, you know, just the light pair of socks and the pants, obviously that's just gonna be for, you know, some warmer days. For colder days, I'm gonna wear some really heavy socks. You want some nice breathable materials, so, you know, you're gonna to wanna to wear your nice wool socks, for example. And then I've got another really uh, heavy pair of wool socks that I'd wear as well over top, like that. So that's why these mucklucks are extremely roomy, is because you're gonna be wearing a lot of under layers and you want breathable ones because you don't want to sweat too badly. So now, yeah, so that gets a bit more snug as you, uh, put on all the other layers there. So that's why they are a generous fit. All right, so with all my heavy socks on there, these are extremely warm and uh, very cushiony to walk in. They're really, really comfortable. As you can see, if I turn around, that's kind of what it's gonna look like from the back. As for the soles, they do wear. You may wanna put a crepe sole on here. What I'm gonna do is use ground up rubber dust in contact cement and uh, make a little bit of an extra grip there and uh, make it so that these soles last as long as possible. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video and seeing me make my first pair of mucklucks and maybe uh, I've inspired you to 
try to make your own as well this winter. Again, if you're interested in the book that I featured uh, in today's video, I'll put a link down below in the, uh, in the description box. And uh, yeah, it's a great book. Lots of great uh, discussion in here on winter trekking and long distance trekking in the winter. And uh, of course, you can make all kinds of gear. They even have plans to make your own um, canvas tents. So that's pretty cool as well. That's a huge project. Don't know if I'm gonna be doing that this year, but there are plans at the back of this to do that as well. I hope you guys have a great week as always. Take care.